A warm welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News update for Thursday, May 26. Barbados has recorded a 13% increase in crime for the first five months of the year. But Assistant Commissioner of Police Erwin Boyce says there's no need to panic. In recent weeks, the country has seen an uptick in shootings, and while Boyce admits it's worrying, he is sure that police are on top of investigations. No, the matters are all under investigation, and our investigators and our intel officers are putting all the pieces together so that we have a complete, a complete uh, assessment of what has happened and what, uh, whether there are linkages or whether or not it is a silo, whether these are things that are motivated by individuals and not necessarily groups. Commissioner Boyce made clear that the Barbados Police Service has a complete package of strategies to maintain security. That we remain very much on the job. We are very much on the job and we are very much available to people in the areas that were affected. Secondly, we always say to people, if you see something, say something. Show us that you are part of the solution and not part of the problem. So we encourage people to say something, see, um, if they see something, say something. Uh, as I said, there's a, a number of strategies, visibility strategies that are in, in motion as we speak, and that would allow us to, to, to reassure the persons in, in, that, in the particular locations that you know the police is on the job and the police will make sure that they are secure. COVID-19 vaccines should soon be available in Barbados for children aged 5 to 11. Co-coordinator of the National Vaccination Program, Major David Clark, today revealed that plans were at an advanced stage to procure the vaccines. While speaking at a Zoom meeting hosted by the Rotary Club of Barbados, he said the paperwork is now being completed and it won't be much longer. Major Clark revealed that 56.7% of children ages 12 to 18 have been vaccinated. Some of the island's main attractions are hoping business will pick up this summer after the COVID-19 pandemic triggered a major slowdown in their operations over the last two years. Head gardener at the Andromeda Botanic Gardens, Sharon Cook, tells Barbados Today she's happy to be back in business after last year's closures, but she notes business has been tough. I'm expecting an utter disaster because it's been utter disastrous. I'd say we're probably... 40, 40 to 60 percent down on where we were going back to pre-pandemic levels but by the same token to be honest i'm so grateful that we're open because this time last year this were the ash came on the 10th of april we were closed for five weeks so i think this time last year we were still closed because we had so much clearing up to do uh so i'm just grateful that we're open so even though business is really bad, today I think we've had five full-paying people. Five. I think yesterday we had four. I think the day before we had two. <laughs> it's a disaster. But we're open. And, uh, you know, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that we're open. The owner of Hunt's Garden, Anthony Hunt, says business is yet to return to 2019 levels, but he's pleased with the number of locals visiting the attraction. He's optimistic that business will be back on track by next year and suggests that tourism authorities should take action to ensure all businesses have a share in the tourism pie. He suggested that taxi operators and small tour operators were key and deserved better treatment. The taxi drivers and, and the um, small tour operators are among the most important people in tourism in Barbados because they're the first people that you're going to get into their car at the airport and drive to the hotel. So he's going to tell you where to go, what to see, what, what's going on, and so on and so forth. Really, really important. So once we have a good team of taxis, well-trained, well-dressed, which most people are, and they're enthusiastic about the island, they're our number one ambassador. And I think we really need to look after those people. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity, and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water.
being cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean cool. To regional news in Trinidad and Tobago, ahead of Friday's mass protest by trade unions, the Fire Service Association and the Prison Service Association peacefully accompanied their union executive branch to deliver letters of disapproval to the chief personnel officer today regarding the proposal for a 2% pay increase over an eight-year period. For whatever. For whatever. With letters in hand, members of both the Prison and Fire Service Associations joined forces in a massive show of rejection of the CPO's counter-proposal of 2% for the period 2014 to 2021. According to President of the Prison Service Association, Siron Richards, the CPO's offer is disrespectful to the working class. And whenever there needs to be economic adjustments, the burden of all those adjustments are upon our backs. We are the ones who always have to be made to sacrifice, who are, who are the ones who always be made to not live, not be able to, to keep up with cost of living, not be able, to, be able to send our children to school, keep up with your household, mitigate security situation as prison officers often do. And we need money to do it. President of the Fire Service Association, Leo Ramkisun, cited several issues which he's hoping will be addressed by the CPO in subsequent negotiations, including pensions and cost of living allowances. He noted that his membership views the 2% increase in salaries as a cut in wages due to inflation since 2013 negotiations were settled. He said the union will only consider negotiations for the 2014 to 2016 period and when this is settled, will consider up to 2021. What madness is this? That is not acceptable whatsoever. It's better you tell us no salary, no um. No, no, no agreement, you're not coming to negotiate because that is not a negotiation. Come with 10% to start and we could start to work our way for a, 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 a reasonable figure between that and the 14% that's supposed to be applicable. For the 14 to 16 period and then we could talk about 17 going forward. Further afield, floods caused by heavier than usual pre-monsoon rains have devastated parts of northeast India. At least 28 people have died during days of flooding in the Assam state. More from Al Jazeera Television. Basanti Badra says she worries about her children's future as she mourns the death of her husband. He drowned soon after the family escaped their flooded home. He went to check on the house. He said there would be damages and wanted to see if the flood water had brought the house down. He hasn't come back since. Dozens of others have also been killed and hundreds of thousands displaced by floods and landslides in India's northeast. Assam state has been hit the hardest. Thousands of people are in shelters and many are living in flooded homes. Rescuers are working to reach people by air and boat. When the, the, the scale of the operations become large, so then the people expect very fast response time. Maintaining that fast response time that becomes, uh, becomes challenging. The region receives heavy rainfall every monsoon season. But this year, rains are early and three to six times more intense than usual, catching many people off guard. The Brahmaputra is one of the longest rivers in the world and is critical to this region's rich biodiversity and economy. It floods every year, sometimes causing major catastrophes. Experts say climate change and increasing human activity like deforestation and building too many embankments is making floods unpredictable and more severe. Many are advocating for policies to make the region more climate resilient. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.